I'd, I'd, I'd like to now uh, introduce Wendy Williford. As I mentioned, uh, she is a tribal council member um, and is here to tell us about Amanda. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys for opening up your hearts to our tribe and to take on this endeavor for us. We want to thank the people of your hearts, um, Laura Lee, Ron, and we also would like to thank Joanne. We know what a heartfelt job this was for you. Also, if you'll look around, there are many tribal members that weren't mentioned, um, just here to Probably some of them for the first times to repay our respects to a trail, to a place that is sometimes difficult for us to come back to. So we thank you for making it easier for us to come back and hopefully you'll see a lot more of us a lot more often now. As Laura Lee mentioned, my name's Wendy Williford. I'm a tribal council member of the Confederated Tribes of the Coos, Lower Umpqua, and Sayusla Indians. I'm a descendant of Caroline Evans, a Hanas Coos woman. My job here today is to tell you the story of our tribes and of a lady named Amanda. I'm gonna read quite, uh, some of this because I wanna make sure that I get the dates and the sequence of events correct. Um, I'm honored to be here to pay our respects to our ancestors, though it be Coos, Sayusla, Umpqua, Alsi, Coquels, or any of the other tribes in Oregon. I'm here to tell a story of the Oregon Indians, specifically the Coos, the Sayusla, and the Lower Umpquas. One of the first contacts that the settlers made was in 1792, and how they were greeted was by the Indians coming out in canoes, offering to trade and settle with them. It was pretty much a very peaceful existence at that point. In the, 19, in the 1850s, tensions grew, though, due to the uh, Rogue War and the failure of Congress to ratify a treaty giving the Indians goods and services when they were moved to the reservations. Sorry. Though the Coos and Sayusla did not take up arms, the Coos Indians... <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <laughs> The, the, the Coos and Sayusla did not take up arms. The Coos Indians were rounded up and moved to the Lower Umpqua River. In 1860, the, the Lower Umpquas and Coos were then marched to the coast reservation located here at Cajas, where they remained until 1875. The coastal reservation was supposed to provide for the Indians. Instead, it was um, a prison camp. Because Congress had not ratified our treaty, the Aussie Agency could not provide for the Indians with food and shelter. Eventually, the Indians were allowed to gather, fish, and farm to sustain themselves. If they had a pass, some Indian men could leave the reservations to chop wood or to work for the settlers. Without a work pass, the soldiers would come after them, and without a pass, the soldiers, I'm sorry, and without a pass, the soldiers would come after them. At this point, I'm gonna read from a journal that I received, and, um, basically a journal of a soldier as he was writing to, to go round up some Indians that had um, not had a pass or didn't come back. And this is at Coos Bay, the Royal August Benzel soldier wrote on May 1st, 1864. Clear, Pike, Punkin, Clark, Mr. Harvey, and Luce go up Coos River 25 miles today after some Indians. They find at the head of the tidewater a small ranch owned by Decouz. He had a pretty little girl, some eight years old. We got two squaws and a buck. After getting in the boat, I was surprised to hear one of the squaws, an old blind, ask me, and there's some words here that I won't try to, um, to say. The chief would probably do better at it than I. But basically what she said was, let me see my little Julia. I complied with this parental demand and was shocked to see this little girl throw her arms around, an, around old Amanda, around old Amanda's neck and cry, Dear Mama. The coos promised the agent to school Julia, and we started back 
with the tide. Got home at midnight, good night. So this is the first part of Amanda's story where she's rounded up in Coos Bay and has to say goodbye to her child. Another part of this journal I'd like to read as well because I think it needs to be said that the settlers and the Indians were not always at odds. In fact, it was more the, the soldiers. The lumbermen go up these bayous and sloughs are the roughest of the men. Nearly all are married to squaws or else have written obligations that will rather that would marry them rather than they allow the Indian agent to deprive them of their concubines. They conceal the Indians, warn the Indians, and otherwise enhance the difficulties of catching the red devils. There are yet some 60 Indians on the North Bend Slough, Kitchen Slough, and Coquel River. We arrive after a rough voyage along the bay at Camp Midnight. The fact of the business is this rowing at the Siwash, Cy which is Indian, is no part of a soldier's duty. Then Amanda was marched up the coast some 80 miles to Yahats. Blind and stumbling, her feet cut from the rocks, leaving a, tra a trail of blood in her wake. Again, this is the story of Amanda. We really thank you for honoring Amanda and our, and our ancestors with this trail. And may it serve as a reminder of the past so we don't repeat our mistakes. And we just feel the heartfelt welcome of coming back here. Thank you. This time, someone that knows Coos history far better than myself um, would like to have her come up and say a few words, and we have some recognitions we would also like to do. Carolyn Slider, she's a council member for I don't know how many years now, Carolyn, far longer than I can remember, and she's also our tribal elder. I didn't know there were so many out there. <laughs> Such a great gathering today, and it's a nice day. Uh, Phyllis said, you know, it's nice and warm and windy. We're used to wind. And um, uh, Wendy told a, a story that's been in our hearts for so many years, and so I'm glad that it's now that you know the story and, and why the trail is a is, uh, uh, a meaning to uh, the tribes because uh, Amanda was a Coos Indian and um, to have other people know that our story and our plight and our uh, concerns and our loss and and we're real happy that today that this there's a trail that's going to be named after Amanda. So, um, I think she pretty well covered all the things I think uh, of the Indian tribes of Friday we was uh, in North Bend and, and they dedicated um, a site to us that was at the uh, some of the sites that, that the Indians lived along the when you're coming across the Macala Bridge there and so um, I think this is a great year for us for being Oregon 150 we have got uh, came to light because we said well, we were here before that 150, Oregon 150, so we stepped ahead a little bit and we've been doing things, you know, through the libraries and yesterday I was at uh, North Bend Museum and things like this will bring us, a t you know, attention to us that we have never had this story told before. And we also have a video that's out that's called Dark Waters. That's a very good video and, and, and I you probably got a Yahats library, I should hope so. If not, let us know because we have put them out in a different library. So it's a, it's a, then you can see the whole story of, of what's been recorded from our tribe. So I know you worked long and hard because we work also through the federal government and it's not an easy thing, it's not a quick thing to do and, and we know what you mean when you say 30 years. <laughs> So, uh, but everything, you know, if you wait long enough, it will come to you. And, and this is, is what we're so proud of today that uh, so many of you came to be with us today and to hear our story.